It was unexpected. Talk. Time to go. On the storm's third day, heavy surf wreaks havoc up and down the coast, damaging two piers, sending boats adrift, and the amazing story of survival as a restaurant gets hit hard. Complete team coverage right now on News Channel 3. Live, up and down the coast, from the beaches to the valleys. At 6, this is KEYT News Channel 3, where the news comes first. Good evening, I'm Victoria Sanchez. We've got a lot to get to tonight. Damage to piers, buildings, and an entire park had to be evacuated. We've got live team coverage of this storm. Sean Quinn will have a look ahead for any more rain, but we begin with Elise Martinez at Goleta Beach, where two people were hurt. One was swept into the ocean when a rogue wave crashed into a restaurant. Elise. Victoria, Goleta Beach took a beating today. High surf pounded the pier and the coastline. Three, way, three boats broke loose in the choppy surf. This one behind me ended up on shore. Now the conditions were so dangerous, officials evacuated the beach and closed it down. And over here at this restaurant that you see behind me, two employees were badly, were hurt, not seriously, but two employees were hurt when a rogue wave caught them off guard. When the sea is as powerful as this, imagine what it did to this restaurant at the base of the Goleta Pier. Workers at the Beachside Bar Cafe were trying to tie down patio furniture as giant surf pounded the coastline. A rogue wave caught them off guard. One of the fellows was taken down the walkway in front of the windows and he went through the door to the patio that had just been washed out by that same wave and then uh, our manager Simon was actually washed out with the wave and then went under the pier and was stuck under the pier. He was able to get out of the water and went to the hospital with a suspected dislocated shoulder. But the wild ride wasn't over yet. Seawater filled the restaurant causing extensive damage. The restaurant was half flooded our patios were as flooded as they could be. Uh, several windows have been broken, furniture upended every which way. And if that wasn't enough, another near miss. We've had two boats out here. One broke loose and went through the pier. And it's probably in 100 pieces now, and the other one's very close to the restaurant heading in that direction. Beachside Bar Cafe is closed for business, but the owner is optimistic. I was going to try and open for dinner tonight, but I guess the fire department won't let me. <laughs> you got to be optimistic about this stuff. We're going to try and get up and running tomorrow morning. Now, the restaurant owner tells us if he can clean up the damage in time, he'll reopen for lunch tomorrow. And in the meantime, Goleta Beach remains closed until further notice. Live in Goleta Beach, Elise Martinez, News Channel 3. Okay, thank you for that, Elise. Stay safe out there. And now we have some home video that shows the power of the waves at the Gaviota Pier. This was shot earlier this morning, and just look at that storm surge. This happened around high tide. The strong pounding took out some of the front pilings. We're told about 50 feet of the pier fell into the ocean. That's about a third of it. Luckily, the boat hoist is still intact, but there is concern that more heavy surf could lead to more damage. The waves in Santa Barbara were also causing a big mess, and the water did not spare people inside a restaurant this morning. <laughs> Time to go. Breakfast soaked. A wave crashed through windows at Moby Dick Restaurant on Stearns Wharf, sending diners running for the doors. The waves were crashing high and hard at the breakwater forcing Harbor Patrol to close the popular walkway. And we have a high, high surf advisory right now with uh, uh, our high tide at 9.15 this morning at over six foot, uh, combined with estimated swell up to 12 feet, uh -huh. uh, causes some pretty uh, dangerous conditions. Rain and waves kicked up sand and water into parking lots, flooding some areas, but it didn't scare people away from checking out the damage. Yeah, what we're seeing here is what I call the perfect storm. You got high tides, 
huge surf and a lot of rain and what that creates is a lot of havoc and destruction along the coast side. After a dry start to the year, the storm enticed people to the beach. Just at the harbor checking the waves out. Uh, there's a surf spot here that doesn't break very often and so whenever a big storm comes in, everybody's coming to check out at the waves. The yacht club at the harbor was spared of damage thanks to the sand berm. But water and seaweed did threaten the building because of the relentless waves. Let's turn it over to weathercaster Sean Quinn. Now, Sean, we need this rain, but it seems to be coming all at once. I know. It's always been the joke around Central and Southern California is that, you know, we get our weather, but it happens in the span of about 10 days or so. And that's a classic example of what we're seeing. Uh, we got some much-needed rainfall, as we've been saying. We got about one to three inches along the coastline across the last few days. In the mountains, though, boy, just copious amounts of rainfall. We haven't gotten the totals yet, but as you can see in the video, uh, the rain total is definitely in and around uh, probably two to four inches for a lot of places and even more so in some of our higher slopes that face to the south. Now currently seeing the radar activity beginning to really wind down across the region. In fact, as we put it into motion, you'll notice everything's starting to really thin out. And that's because the core of the storm is uh, pretty much moving over northern California as we speak, beginning to kind of unravel as it does. So as our pinpoint radar show, Especially the farther north you go, you're seeing little, uh, less and less rainfall. Really, our biggest focus will be down to the southern areas of our region, and that would be in Ventura County. And that is because we are seeing a little bit more activity down there. You'll notice right there those higher cloud tops showing up. That's the heavier cells of activity. One right over the Oxnard Plain, as you can see right there. So I'll be back in just a moment. We'll talk about what to expect for the overnight, as well as you head into Sunday. And then, I can't believe I'm going to say it, Victoria, but some much-deserved drying out time. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, thanks for that, Sean. Debris and flooding has caused road closures in Santa Barbara and Cuyama Valley. The Santa Barbara County Road Closure Advisory warns that San Marcos and Gibraltar roads have been closed because of rocks and debris. Canyon Crossing in the Cuyama Valley area has been closed because of flooding and driver advisories have been issued for the Painted Cape Road area. Heavy rainfall loosened the ground, causing a tree to fall on a car in Oxnard. Another driver says she barely avoided getting hit and had to drive around it. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the car was badly damaged. Now we turn to the north, where at the Avila Beach Pier, it was damaged by, again, strong waves. And residents say they cannot remember a time when they saw high tide and waves this high. News Channel 3's Natalie Tavidian was out there today and has the very latest. It's not your typical day at the beach. Locals taking pictures of what they say is pretty rare. We're experiencing a very angry ocean. The boards on the pier are lifting up from the swell underneath the pier. It's bringing the kelp up onto the beach and like it's on the swing sets and stuff. And Parker Lauritsen is an avid surfer. He always keeps an eye on the tides. It never does this. This is extremely different. It's obviously because of this storm. It's a uh, too choppy. It's never this choppy and never this big either. This is the biggest I've ever seen Avila ever. It never touches the bottom of the pier or even comes close. The highest tide was actually measured at uh, standard at 5.8 feet, but there may have been storm uh, surge on top of that. So we were seeing waves overtopping at quite a distance into the parking lot over the port. Tides were so high, Avila Pier had some minor damage with broken boards. Closed the Avila Pier because it has the most exposure. The tides were highest early this morning, and that's when officials say they saw the most damage happen. We did have some waves come up, hit the bottom of the pier, and break some boards loose. As residents continue to snap photos of all the damage, they're urged to be cautious. Respect the ocean, respect the tape that says, hazard, don't go here. The pier in Avila will stay closed until everything can be repaired, and that won't happen until the tides go down.